everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're taking a look at the Elkhan Spectre DR Dual Field of View Optic. If you were to bring up the Spectre DR to a group of people who used it, uh, especially if they used it for any considerable amount of time, it's going to be a very house-divided conversation. Half the people I talked to who used them loved them, half the people I talked to hated them. Very, very, uh, well, there was no gray area in the conversation. So I was curious about it because in the military I came in contact with people who had them issued to them, but I wasn't cool enough to have one issued to me, which was fine. Um, and it just seemed to be even back then thinking back to myself then people either loved it or they hated it and i never could really figure out why because obviously i didn't have any time with one uh, so i decided that i wanted to take a look at the the spectra dr reason being is it's been around for a long or not a long time it's been around for some time it's been on the market for a while long enough for certainly the bugs to be worked out of it uh, so i just wondered why it wasn't uh, more popular than it is uh, is it a failure of marketing is it a bad optic like what was the reason that we didn't see more elkans out there in the world now some people might think, well, the price, the LK Inspector DR is kind of expensive compared to other optics in the same, I guess you would consider category, which we'll get to. Um, but that's not really uh, an argument because there's plenty of optics right around the same price range that are popular. So what was it about the Elkan that set it apart from those other optics when it came to popularity? Why is it as such a, why is it such a niche optic? Well, kids optics. Kinsey's Optics had a really good deal on one, so I went ahead and picked one up, and I wanted to put it through my review process to see why, if any reason, the LKN isn't more popular. And one of the things I hear about the Elkan Spectre DR more than anything else is it's built like a tank. People verbatim, that's the comment. Even people who don't like uh, the Elkan Spectre DR use that same comment. Well, it's really, really well built. And then they have particular issues with it besides that. Um, the design of the Elkan is pretty, I wouldn't say 100% unique, but it does definitely has very, very few other optics in its specific category. And the fact that instead of being a variable magnification optic, it is a dual field of view optic. What that means is it has a one power setting and a four power setting and no settings in between, which is a very, uh, pretty much awesome feature if you think about it because I know me when I'm using a 1 to 4 or even like you know a 4 to 12 it's very rare that I go from that one power or that lowest power setting and stop somewhere in the middle especially on a 1 to 4 I'm either going to be on 1 or I'm going to be on 4 and there's no middle ground there so having an optic that removes those settings in the middle is actually really cool uh, another cool thing about it is the adjustment feature that you have on the Elkan is literally just a lever. Uh, just right there. Go ahead and turn the rifle around so you can see it and I'll show it to you again is all I have to do is thumb that forward to go from one to four, which is, if you think about it, pretty slick, pretty fast, pretty user intuitive. I don't have to mess with a foxtail or a dial or a ring or anything like that. I can be on the gun and literally flip from one to four and then back. Support hand off, make the adjustment, support hand back on the rifle and I'm back to work. So beside the fact that it's a dual field of view optic versus a variable magnification optic, which is kind of a, a terminology thing, but it's also being specific to the features. There are no variable powers. There's one or there's four. Uh, the only other system that you're really going to have access to that has that ability um, is a flip to side magnifier like you'd get for an aim pointer in EOTech. Um, and those, you know, love them or hate them, they're not going to give you the same degree of options that you're going to get with the LCAM, which is what we're getting into now. What else does the Elkan offer? Well, it does have integrated built-in backup iron sights, which I'll talk about right now. Um, as you can see, the sight radius is very, very minimal. The reason these are there is in the event that your optic becomes fogged up, like if you're going from inside to outside, humid area, something like that, emergency situations only would you use these sights because they are not, they're not specific. They're, it's similar to like if you were to take your, your standard uh, AR platform sights and use the ghost ring or the low light setting. 
Uh, it's it's going to get the work done at closer to intermediate ranges, but it's not something that you're going to be able to use at great distances. Plus, you have a really significantly reduced sight radius. In fact, the sight radius they give you is less than what you'd find on some compact handguns. But as you can see, even with this reduced sight radius, I'm able to deliver accurate gunfire just using these backup iron sights, which is a really cool feature that's built right into the LCAN. Uh, of course, a bad thing about it is there is a hide over bore issue, a significant one if you think about it, but uh, the sights are fixed. So if you're going to use them, if you're going to use an LCAN, uh, spend some time, a couple hundred rounds even, or you know, 10 or 15 rounds every time you, you go out to the range to practice to, to kind of ingrain that uh, mechanical offset into you. So in the event that you do need these, you know where your hold has to be at your very close distance ranges. Moving from there, we get into the reticle. The LCAN Spectre DR comes with multiple reticle options. This particular one has the BDC for the 62 grain round. It is military centric, so it's 62 grain, which is what I shot during the entire review process. Uh, about a thousand rounds of privy partisan 62 grain, which isn't technically mil spec, but it is roughly the same round that this, this uh, BDC is graduated for. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the 62 grain round, I'll be honest with you, and that's a totally different subject, but as far as the BDC goes, for the 62 grain round, it performed extremely well and it seemed to be exactly what it was supposed to be, which is a BDC reticle for the 62 grain round in 223 uh, As far as point A and point impact goes, once this thing was zeroed, I did zero uh, at the recommended 100 meter range. Um, on four power, you know, ranging out, I was only able to shoot out to 300 meters with it, unfortunately, but 300 meters on 10 inch steel, I was getting consistent hits, which is exactly what you want from this rifle system, exactly what you want from the BDC. If it's going to offer you a ballistic, a, a, a ballistic drop calculator reticle, then you want it to be accurate for the round that you're going to fire. Now, I did throw some 6.2 grain, uh, grain Hornaday in here just to see if, if, you know, if it was green tip centric, like if it was that specific, and I was still able to get consistent hits with that. So I think any 62 grain round, of course, if you're going to pick one up, you want to try this for yourself, uh, is gonna, it's going to BDC for that round well enough to get the work done. Uh, for carbine length guns, LCAN says it's it's out to 600 meters, and for machine guns, it's supposed to be out to 1,000 meters. And I'm a machine gun, so I wasn't able to check that. Uh, and of course, I wasn't able to shoot out to 1,000 anyway. Now here's my second favorite feature, and that is the reticle itself has five and five illuminated reticle options. What I mean by that is I've got five settings for a CQB dot, your traditional red dot. Uh, 1.5 to 6 MOA, depending on what setting I'm on, and then I have two night vision settings. That's pretty damn awesome. Uh, using on the one power, just snapping in, everything like that, it works just like a red dot sight. I didn't really get any tunneling effect issues or anything. The glass is clean, I've got a wide field of view. That was cool. Then I've got five settings for the entire reticle to be illuminated. Two night vision settings and then three eye visible, any condition uh, settings to illuminate the reticle in red. So 10 total illumination settings that are available to me, uh, four for night vision, uh, six for the naked eye. I don't know of another optic out there, especially one that's built like this, that's going to offer uh, that many options for you. And being able to go from a CQB dot on one, flip it to four, and then go to illuminate the entire reticle in a low light or twilight situation, or even slave it to my night vision, uh, is a feature that uh, I really, really appreciate on this optic. So when I polled the people who'd used the Spectre DR, uh, one of the most common things in the negative column that people brought up is the fact that the, uh, the adjustments are exposed. Uh, as you can see, my elevation, my windage adjustments, they move the entire body. It's not uh, like you'd get with other optics where all elevation and windage adjustments occur inside an enclosed space. It actually moves the optic body itself when you adjust it. Uh, there are some built-in shock features that will prevent it from losing zero, at least in theory. Uh, but that's definitely one of the things that people looked at and said, you know what, I, it's built like a tank, yeah, I get it. But the fact that the elevation and windage adjustments are external, the whole body itself moves versus the adjustments that happening internally uh, is something that gave people great pause. So obviously the elevation and windage adjustments being exposed is something that people didn't care for. Uh, it is half MOA adjustments, so you can get pretty precise with this. Obviously not as precise as you'd get from some other, some other optics, but in the one to four, or in this case one or four category, uh, half MOA is, is gonna get you roughly what you're gonna need to get uh, without being too precise. Because again, at, at 4x max magnification, you're not going to shoot precision, super precision shooting out six, seven, eight hundred meters anyway. For that, you'd use something that had a little bit more uh, reach than a 1 or 4 magnification optic. Now, the question is, with the exposed uh, elevation to windage adjustments and just the, na the nature of the optic in general, is it really built like a tank? Well, 
Here's a five round group I shot, Magpod supported with 6.2 grain pretty partisan ammunition to show you where the rifle is hitting. Now, obviously not the greatest group I've ever shot. Of course, shooting Magpot supported, and then the ammunition itself is not the most accurate ammunition in the world uh, versus what I would normally shoot. Uh, but it gives us a, a good sample size, a good idea of where the rifle is zeroed, where it's hitting. Now, of course, I want to be able to test and see if uh, the rifle were to take a significant fall or if it fell over or anything like that, if it was going to cause a shift in zero. That's something we want to be concerned about, especially since the, the actual body of the uh, optic itself creates the adjustment versus an internalized adjustment like you get with most other optics. Now, the caveat that I always give when I do uh, optics reviews is if your rifle takes a significant fall, you need to check your zero anyway. Don't trust it if you have the option not to trust it. If it happens in the moment when you're actually using the rifle for self-defense purposes, then you got to go with what you got and that's where tests like this come into play that give you that confidence in the event that it does happen I can still trust my optic if I don't have time immediately to check it so the most common thing like I said was Elkan's built like a tank Elkan's built like a tank of course I got to test that right uh, my normal test I just do a balcony drop uh, a little bit outside the realm of reality again most people are not going to throw their rifle off a balcony or have it fall that far but I want to accelerate multiple drops and kind of simulate it taking a catastrophic hit. So I went ahead and did my balcony test. Not once, not twice, but three times. So three balcony drops in a row. Is the rifle going to maintain at zero? Well, here is the five round group I fired after the third drop. I'm calling that good. Uh, based on the conditions and the ammunition I had available to me, is could there have potentially been a slight shift? Yes. But when I visually inspected the optic, I didn't see it out of place. And remember what I talked about, how I could visually see if my rifle had fallen out of zero, and that's something that you can do. Just like you would do with the, the external adjustments on a scope or the external adjustments on an RMR, you can paint mark your zero point. And if the rifle does take a significant fall, you can just look at it and be like, okay, it has shifted, I need to check my zero. That's something you're not gonna get from a lot of other optics. Again, it might not be something you need, you may not be using this optic in an environment where you're really worried about that. And again, if it does take a fall, you should check it anyway. Uh, but I'm satisfied with the fact how many drops this thing took that I would still be able to do shoot accurately at re realistic ranges that I would use the Elcan for. My final verdict on the Elcan Spectre DR. During the review process, I put uh, 
uh, right around a thousand rounds through it. I used it uh, for a couple of classes I was teaching. I ran a night vision class, uh, and I also just taught general uh, defensive rifle fundamentals, defensive rifle one with it. And then I spent a lot of time on the range just practicing with it. And I have actually uh, now firmly set myself in the camp of I love the Elkan Spectre DR. My only complaint is eye relief on forces. So if I'm in one, no big deal. But when I go to four, if my head isn't in the exact specific right place, the eye relief on this thing is very unforgiving. I'm gonna have to make an adjustment. So if you're going to use the Spectre like I found, you basically have to memorize uh, your cheek weld positioning a little bit more specific than you would with some other optics. So on four power, my head has to be within half an inch in the right place. Not a huge deal if this is gonna be your go-to optic. You're gonna get used to it very quick. There is a learning curve, but once you get past that, uh, that conscious having to readjust, you're gonna be just fine. But if I had to give this thing a big negative, the negative would be on the eye relief. On four power, it is very, very unforgiving. Can you still get good shots done even if you do get some scope shadow? Yeah, different topic, of course. Uh, but that, if I had to complain about anything, that's definitely going to be my complaint. Uh, but it's something, like I said, that you can work through very easily, especially if this is going to be the optic that you use. Um, one potential negative, and again, another potential negative could be the cost. But what you're getting, um, I think this you're getting exactly what you're paying for. I mean, uh, the reticle options, the backup iron sights, the fact that it is, in fact, built like a tank. Um, the ease of adjustment, ease of zeroing, BDC reticle, and then those 10 different reticle options from CQB on one side and then the total illuminated reticle on the other side, you're getting a lot of features in the thing. And then, the, and then of course, a big selling point is the fact that it's one or four, uh, which is awesome. Can you get that from other systems? Yeah, you can use a flip to side magnifier like a SAT or, or some other optics out there, but all things considered, if this is the type of package you're looking for, you really don't have to look any further than the Elkan Spectre DR. Again, it's always going to be a house divided with this thing. People are going to love it or they're going to hate it. I love it. I would recommend it to anyone who asked me, hey, what do you think of the Elkan Spectre DR? If you're looking for a variable magnification optic that's going to be almost bomb proof and give you a lot of reticle options, you don't need to look any further than this. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.